said that I'd start with uh, exercises for A in the last exercise. I kind of didn't because I just discussed uh, how MSP works. Um, but uh, now we'll go on to the exercise itself. So I've downloaded the relevant uh, sound files as it asks for and now I need to uh, import a sound. So I'll import a hole punch sound um, <clears throat> and I need to turn on the DAC um, as, or the, the DSP processing as you remember from the last tutorial uh, in order for any sound to be heard at all. So I turn that on um, and, uh, and then I can play my sound. There you go, so there it is. Um, and I then introduce the uh, DSP window, which I've kind of already mentioned. I'll mention one or two things about that now. Um, here we are. We're, we're now audio is now being processed. There's a couple of other useful um, uh, options, I suppose, in the DSP window, which you uh, may need to know as things go on. The driver is what sound card you're using. Um, and if it doesn't read core audio built-in output at the moment, it should do. Uh, that is, of course, if you're working on a Mac. Uh, if you're working on a PC, it might be something different. Uh, but basically, it's your, your um, default sound driver is what you want at the moment because you're just trying things out. But as you can see, there are a variety of different um, uh, means of, of um, outputting data. Um, there's a sound flower on here, which is an MSP means of um, directing sound to other applications. On your uh, that you happen to be working with, um, aggregate device will ignore for the moment. Non real time, Max will work in non real time. So if you've got very very heavy processing, um, or sometimes if you want Max to uh, run through a series of processes quickly, uh, non real time can be a useful way of doing that. Um, uh, add rewire uh, is a means of rewiring to other applications. Um, so similar kind of thing to Soundflower, um, but I, I think uh, you may well know. Um, something about rewire anyway and then live as well if you happen to have um, uh, Max for live on your machine so anyway most of the time you'll want it on core audio built in output uh, you can choose your input device you can choose your output destination um, which again uh, on, on the basis of core audio built in is going to be uh, internal speakers or, in, or headphones depending on where you've got them plugged, it, plugged in um, I/O vector size and signal vector size. Um, you don't need to worry about too much at the moment. CPU utilization. If you've got a lot of processing going on, at um, then that will crank up. If it gets to 100%, you'll find that um, audio processing sort of chokes, um, and you'll get discontinuities and stuff. Um, you can place a limit on that. We don't need to worry about that. And then you've got input and output channels that you can specify as well. You can have up to 512 output channels and 512 input channels depending on um, you know if you have as many physical inputs and outputs on your hard or your sound card which is somewhat unlikely but you can aggregate them and so on but when you get excited by multi-channel if you do then um, that uh, that might be for you so yeah, there's the DSP status window uh, moving on yeah, basically in, in this patch, I, 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 or sorry, in this exercise, I suggest that you uh, try and find a means of looping your, um, your playback. Um, now, there are ways of doing this which don't require you to do any jiggery-pokery. You can just send a message to SF Play that tells it to loop, and well, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but uh, you, you could do it manually, and basically what you would need to do, let's move this down a bit. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the SF Play object. Um, if I haven't said so before, the SF Play object is one way of playing back your sound files, uh, or you know, playing back samples from your hard drive, and it plays them directly from your hard drive. So it accesses the data on your hard drive as it plays it back. Um, so it, that that's one way of doing it. Um, another way is uh, by using what are called buffers, and we'll look at them in the next uh, tutorial, or set of exercises. Um, and those import sound on into uh, RAM, um, so sort of short-term memory on your computer, uh, which is more directly and quickly accessible. So you can uh, store stuff there, and you can manipulate it very easily within these buffers uh, without changing the original file. So SF Play is one way, and again, it, it uh, reads it directly from your hard drive. A buffer is another way, and it reads it from um, 
sort of well having read it into random access memory it can max can then access it from there um, as you can see uh, max takes uh, sorry sf play takes two uh, in in well uh, uh, critical ones in order to make it function one is the uh, open dialog which you just saw and then there is uh, a toggle which is telling it to play back um, and the toggle if you remember is sending out one and zero messages so uh, when it's um, when it when it when the cross is there it sends out a one when a, no cross is there it sends out a zero um, so if I were to and I can stop playback playing uh, with a longer sound although I'll try it with this one yeah you can't really hear it uh, but if it was a longer sound that I, I could I could curtail it by just switching off playback uh, as your outlets you've got two um, two channels of output uh, based on the number of channels that you specify as an argument in SF play so there are two channels there the left and the right or channel one or channel two and they're being sent to independent inputs of the uh, digital audio converter object but this right hand outlet is uh, outputting a bang uh, when the sound has finished playing back so if I hover my cursor over there you can see SF play bang when done playing and you probably saw it bang uh, or saw it flash at the end of the file there you go so it did that so what I need to do I can use that as a kind of trigger I'll get rid of the print object I can use that as a trigger to make SF play play back again um, and I could do that by um, making a message object with a number one in it because it's the one that makes SF play play again um, connect the banging to that message with the one in it and then connect that in turn to well either the toggle or the SF play it doesn't really matter uh, I'll, I'll connect it to the toggle um, and now obviously I've, to, I've got to turn the toggle off although that's you know it's not really telling SF play to do anything particularly useful and then um, it will loop it which is fine um, but that will continue looping forever unless I tell it not to um, and I can tell it not to by removing that um, connection but of course that's not a very efficient way of doing it because uh, if my patch is locked I can't do that so what we'll do is we'll put in a gate um, and uh, and use that to either let that message through in order to tell it to play again or not to let it through so if I connect the one to uh, now which inlet would I need to connect it to uh, well let's check them uh, the left hand side zero closes the gate non zero opens the gate outlet so in fact that is the means of uh, controlling the gate so we don't want to send it to there we want to send it to the right hand side where it says incoming gated messages so click, click uh, uh, connect to there and then throughput to there and then I need yet another toggle in order to control the gate so in each of these cases the toggle is being used for something slightly different in this case it's being used to control whether the gate is allowing messages through or not in this case it's being used as a, an on off switch to SF play and in this case it's being used as an on off switch to the, the, uh, the DSP processing in each case it's only sending ones and zeros it's the, it's the objects that receive them that interpret those ones and zeros as on and off messages or open and close messages um, so that's a fundamental distinction to get your head around really don't think of the toggle as an on off thing it's sending numbers remember but you can use those, num those numbers in any way you you wish so now if I turn the uh, open the gate sorry um, and I um, get play to play back um, it will it will loop um, but I could stop it looping by turning off the gate or shutting the gate